Hello, I'm Joseph, and today I want to talk about the Pico W with the debug probe from Raspberry Pi uh, alongside with using Rust. This is something I really struggled with to get all of these things to work, including um, step-through debugging and serial printing at the same time. Um, and I have guides for Windows and Linux, and by the time this video comes out, hopefully for Mac too. If not, it should come up in the next few days. But usually people don't watch all this all at once, so... By the time you watch it, it should eventually be there if you're on Mac. Um, the first thing is the most important part. Um, the non-headered versions of the uh, of the Pico and the Pico W, uh, you need to kind of figure out what to uh, kind of the wiring is for the DAP connection. That's like JTAG, but it's a, it's a different protocol. And there's three holes there. Um, you're looking at it right now. So this is the wiring guide, which is orange is transfer, yellow is receive, and black is ground. And it goes into the uh, second side. Well, if you follow the cord, it's the second side here. Uh, the other side is serial. You can kind of see the wiring here as well. Um, yellow is, again, read. Orange is transfer. Uh, black is ground. But you can't really see it here. Here, I'll give it a little bit closer of a look for that there so you can see yellow, orange, black, and then yellow, black, orange uh, for that. So hopefully that gives you some help because, again, I, I looked at the documentation. It wasn't there. I had to look at the schematics, at least for ground, and I kind of start swapping them around to figure it out. You do need to solder in some headers uh, for your Pico uh, W and the regular Pico with the non-headers because unfortunately what you'll get is you'll get this these wires here which have the um, kind of insert pins because your other one that you have here will be used for actually going into the um, the breadboard uh, for your for your Pico W. So this is some context there that's a really important part because for all this to work you do need to have it wired properly. Okay so with that said let me go ahead and hide this here. Uh, I am using um, Rust Rover, Rover Rust, I forgot what it's exactly called. And I have a guide right now, so I'm not gonna go over this really. I just wanna show you how to run it and do some basic debugging stuff. Um, so I have my Rust version, which you don't need the Pico SDK for. You just need Rust up, install Rust with the Thumb V6, ARM V6 stuff, and then uh, grab in Embassy. Embassy is the most critical part of all of this. Um, Embassy does not do package releases. They they make you clone it, and then you have to do all these um, packages in the cargo that are relative to whatever you kind of put there with the versions with it. So that's the, that one thing. And then for Linux specifically, you do need to use the USB permissions and set that all up. For Windows, it's going to be a bit different um, because you do need to set the COM parameter. And if you don't know how to do that, Basically, what you do is you right-click on the uh, Start menu and go to Device Manager. And then from there, you'd go to um, the Ports and Comms. And then it's usually more than anything but COM1 is what it's going to be. So it, for me, it's COM5. Uh, that means that once I install the Pico SDK, uh, you will have to go into several of the scripts. Now, the scripts are the same between Linux and Windows in terms of the naming scheme. So we have the debugger. You'll need to change the um, if you're going to be doing debug or release in these. And then we have open OCD. Um, same thing here. Uh, you know, if you're if you're installing the Pico SDK, make sure you put the version of the Pico SDK in here as well. And then the serial connection, this is where you replace COM. And if you're doing release or if you change the uh, binary name, make sure you change it here as well. And it's all the same. So everything that I'm going to show here is exactly what you can do for Linux, other than the initial setup that is in the README. This is a repository that you can clone and just start using. This way, you don't have to go through the uh, rigmarole that I went through of getting this to work. One thing I will say, if anybody knows how to do this, um, I would prefer to use uh, Probe RS. I, I had this in setup up for the cargo Tomo stuff uh, for this here. The only gotcha was I had to always specify the probe, which then you would get via probe RS list. Uh, and then you have to put in the serial that is, or the numbers stuff that is in that probe listing. Uh, but you can't, probe R you can't run probe RS with open OCD. Even if you try to do attach, it does not work. Um, and I can't seem to get printing to work with debugging, step through debugging. So I can either print with probe RS or just debug via open OpenCD. 
And I prefer it to all be one uh, continuous process where if I'm using Open OCD, I can still get the printing to work. So that's just one little gotcha I'm gonna say as what I could not get to work. But what I, what I am gonna show you is how to get all these individuals to work. So the first thing is you will need three individual terminals. So if you're in Visual Studio Code, just open up three terminals. Um, these are all PowerShell scripts. Um, and you just run them in the sequence of first open OCD. So actually I'm gonna overlay the, um, the video here. Let's do something like that. Um, and we're gonna do Windows, debugger, open OCD, and you'll see the lights turn on. So we know that now it's it's operational. Uh, another thing to know on, at least on Linux, you cannot debug both cores. There are different ports for the cores. So 333 is for core zero. It's not showing me what it is for core one on Windows. I don't know why, but on Linux will be like 334. Um, that's an important part because the next tab that you're gonna do is the debugger, um, so open, or sorry, Windows Debugger GDB. Uh, a couple things to note for that is that there's a list of commands that I have here. Uh, let me hide this real quick. What that will go ahead and run the the connection, stop the existing program, upload the new program that you have, and then start it, but not actually do anything yet. This will give you the opportunity to set any breakpoints or just continue it if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And you're not going to see any lights flicker or anything else like that because it's going over the DAP protocol. It's not going over serial. That's going to be an important note there. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. I press enter one more time. It's now reading symbols. And um, you wait for the GDB to start. And as this is all happening, what you can do as you're waiting for this to upload, right now it's uploading it, is you can set up another terminal. And then we're going to do uh, Windows debugger uh, serial. So this is going to go to the COM5. On Windows, you will not see anything print out until we run the application. On Linux, you will see some uh, things saying like it's a write-only error or warning or something like that. Then you know it's connected. Um, but now we have it here, so we can do a breakpoint for main and then do continue. And what that will do is it still won't print anything in serial, but it stopped at the main entry point. Let's set, let's set another breakpoint here. Let's do something random. So uh, if we go to the source code here and go to main, um, there is a, uh, uh, let's say right here in the 113. So we're gonna do breakpoint for main and it's not main colon, it's gonna be main RS colon and then 113. Uh, and then we're gonna type in continue. Now we should see uh, some stuff print out. So now we're seeing it print out on the serial connection. Anything that's info here is what kind of what I'm printing. It, that's, just, that's the uh, info code that you see here. And you'll see the uh, other side of the lights light up as well for the connections going through. And then you can go ahead and continue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue this. This runs an infinite loop because it is a web server. Um, and you'll see a bunch more stuff kind of print out and uh, now it's waiting for a connection. And I got my IP address for that web server there. So pretty basic stuff. I don't want to go too deep in the weeds of all this stuff that I've set up. And again, I'm going to be working on, on Mac, but I just don't have that ready just yet. Uh, the repo will be available for you to download of this video when it's released. And then again, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll try to answer what I can. This is a, a kind of convoluted thing. And by the way, it, there is some Wi-Fi stuff that you will need to replace. I am setting it through a configuration file that I can't open because it's my Wi-Fi stuff, but that config.rs that you'll, you'll go into and you'll change for your Wi-Fi connection and stuff like that. So other than that, Good luck. Hopefully this saves you a crap ton of time because I spent my entire weekend um, getting this all up and running on both Windows and Linux because I'm always swapping between these two all the time. And again, any questions or comments, please let them know. And if anybody knows how to get ProBRS to work with a debugger and printing, please, please, please let me know. Now, if you're just one little gotcha here, if you're trying to get the compiler to compile anything, you just need to do cargo build um, because the target is already set. You can see the target here. It's set to thumb V at 6M. Um, just do cargo build. It'll build it. That's it. And if you need to do a released version, make sure you do go back into these files and change it from debug to release. And if you're changing the binary name, make sure you go back into these files and change the binary names as well for serial and everything else. Anyways, look at the readme, just follow it to the T. I have it for both Windows and Linux, like I said, and Mac will come soon. Good luck.